So this presentation is in conjecture to the other presentation about polynomials and how you can uh, write a polynomial in standard form and then classify it uh, by degree and number of terms. So for example, if we had x cubed plus 3x plus 7, you would all be able to tell me that this is a cubic trinomial because the highest degree is 3 and there are 3 terms. Okay, so as long as you can remember that, this is, we're going to take that information and use it in um, this set of slides. So the first thing that we need to understand is what a factor is and how it relates to a polynomial. So the linear factors of a polynomial are just like the prime factors of a whole number. The difference is that they may occasionally be binomials, so there will be parentheses involved. So if we took 6 and we were asked to factor that, most of you would go straight to a factor tree and tell me that the factors are 2 and 3, because 2 times 3 will equal 6. Now if I ask you to factor x squared plus 4x minus 12, you would start by writing some parentheses or possibly doing the x method, and then you would fill in the correct information that when multiplied together, it would produce the polynomial we started with. So x squared plus 4x minus 12 would factor into x plus 6 times x minus 2. These are linear factors. Okay, so you'll notice it's x plus something or x minus something. Obviously an x on its own would also be considered a linear factor because in order for it to be linear it simply has to have an x it doesn't have to have an addition of something next to it. So again, factoring is the same concept as factoring an actual number. So the difference is it involves parentheses because you have variables and you need to multiply to produce the polynomial back. So the first example is we're going to take an expression that is uh, of factors being multiplied together and we're actually going to multiply them together in order to produce the polynomial in standard form. So the expression that we have is x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3 and we're going to multiply these three things together in order to get a polynomial. So the first thing you want to do is to rewrite whatever the factors are that you have to multiply. Now, it is really important that you write it down correctly because if you don't, you're not going to end up with the same thing. So always verify that what you wrote down matches the question that you're trying to work. So mine does, we have a 1, a 2, and a 3, and it has a 1, 2, and a 3 in the original expression, so I know I did it right. From here, I always suggest that you multiply the first two together, so that you're going to foil these things together, okay, foil them. So again, foiling is first, outside, inside, last. So you'll get x squared for the firsts. 2 times x is plus 2x. 1 times x is plus x. And 1 times 2 is plus 2. Put parentheses around that and multiply on that x plus 3. Simplify before you actually multiply. So you end up with x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x plus 3. The next thing is you need to multiply these two together. It's not exactly foiling because it's a trinomial and a binomial, but if you draw the lines like I did when I foiled, you will ensure that you're going to multiply everything together that needs to get multiplied together. So I'm going to multiply the x squared times x and then also times the 3. So I'm going to stay within my um, trinomial. I'm going to multiply each parts to the binomial before I move on to the next one. So again, x squared times x is x cubed and then x squared times 3 is plus 3x squared. Move on. So now we're done with the x squared. So 3x is going to get multiplied to x, which is plus 3x squared. And then it's going to get multiplied to the 3, which is plus 9x. Okay? The next step is the 2. So the 2 gets multiplied to the x, and then also to the 3. So you'll get 2x plus 6. From here, you should notice that it's pretty much preset up to simplify very easily. The x squared terms are right next to each other, and the x terms are right next to each other. So from here, you just simply need to simplify this polynomial, and you'll get x cubed 
plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. And that is our final solution. If you want to make sure to verify that you can properly classify, this would be a cubic polynomial of four terms. So again, just a quick reminder, you rewrite the expression, verifying you did it correctly, multiply the first two together, and then multiply on the third. If there are four expressions, multiply the first two together and the last two together, and then multiply those together um, once you've simplified them. So you'll end up with two quadratics getting multiplied. So, moving on. Example two would be factoring. So if we wanted to rewrite 2x cubed plus 10x squared plus 12x in factored form, the first thing again is to start by rewriting it. And then to look at the terms and see if they have anything in common. I can pretty quickly recognize that they all have a 2x in common. So I'm going to factor out the 2x. So when I factor out the 2x, I'm going to get x squared plus 5x plus 6. In order to verify that you've done it correctly, re-multiply it together. Okay, so if we were to re-multiply these three things together, we would get 2x cubed plus 10x squared plus 12x, which means I did it correctly. So I definitely factored this right. The next step is to continue factoring if possible. If you can't, you do stop. Okay, it's just that you don't have linear factors necessarily. So we need to see if x squared plus 5x plus 6 can break down any further. And since this is positive and positive, we cannot use 1 and 6. But if we do use 2 and 3, we will definitely be able to factor it one additional time. So x plus 2 times x plus 3 will produce the x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we factored it. This is considered the most factored form we can, uh, can get. Occasionally, you might need to use other methods of factoring, so just use what you've uh, been taught previously, whether it's grouping, X method, bottoms up, whatever it is that you use is fine. Just understand to always look to see if anything can come out of all of the terms first. That is always the first step, okay? So always, first step is to factor anything out of everything. Okay, so if you can find it, factor it. If they don't have anything in common, then obviously you can't factor anything out. So this is just a kind of a brief explanation of what a relative maximum or relative minimum is. If you look at my graph, you should be able to recognize that it continues infinitely up and infinitely down, which means there is no actual max or min specifically. However, it does change directions twice. At those change of directions are where you get your relative max or mins. So a minimum is a low, it's the lowest. So right here, at negative five, five, we would have a relative minimum. And then up here, at five, 10, we would have a relative maximum, okay? Because it's considered higher and it's a turning point. So when you're looking for a relative uh, max or relative min, you're just looking for changes in direction and high and low points. Um, there is no full max or full min because both of these graphs continue infinitely down and infinitely up. Okay, so relative max or min, it's the turning points in a graph that does not have a max or min. So the second part are factors and zeros of a polynomial. So in, in this example, we're finding zeros of a polynomial function. The zeros are the x-intercepts, okay? So zeros equal x-intercepts. So in order to find x-intercepts, you always set y equal to zero. So the first step to this equation is to actually set it equal to zero. So you're gonna end up with zero equals x minus two times x plus three times x plus one. The next step is to remember the zero product property.
which stated if a times b was equal to zero, then either a was equal to zero or b was equal to zero. So if we have that x minus 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 1 is equal to 0, then each of those individually could end up equaling 0, and the whole thing would be 0. So you separate them and set them each equal to 0 to solve. And you will get 2, negative 3, and negative 1 as your zeros. Okay. Sometimes you'll be able to skip this little middle step because you'll start to recognize that it's just the opposite of what's inside the linear factor. Um, once you've been able to do that, I don't require you to show the middle step. However, if you honestly aren't sure, you need to make sure that you're separating your factors, setting them equal to zero, and solving for the x's individually. Uh, that way you'll ensure that you're always getting the correct zeros for our polynomials. Okay, so factor theorem is the next thing. The expression x minus a is a linear factor of a polynomial if and only if the value of a is a zero of the related polynomial function. In other words, if we were given x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 1, the zeros in this case are negative 3, 2, and negative 1. So they are interrelated. If the zeros are told to be together of one polynomial, then you can write the linear factors to go with those zeros. And if you have the linear factors and they're told that they are part of a single polynomial, then you can solve them for the zeros. Okay? So you have to be able to go back and forth between the two. If it's not uh, safe to assume that the linear uh, factors are of a polynomial or, or that the um, the zeros aren't of a polynomial, then you kind of can't do anything. But lucky for you, we never have that problem. You're always able to assume that what's given to you will work. Okay? So what does this mean for us? Uh, for us? Well, it means that if we're given the zeros, we can write a linear factor or factors, and then we can multiply them together to produce a polynomial, um, which is just a combination of the two stuff we've already done. The example will explain it perfectly, so let's just move on to the example.